Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. I would like to first point out that I have swapped out the plant behind me. And I don't know if you can still, can you still see this one? Yeah, you can. This, yeah. <laughs> this is a neon philodendron. It's new growth, looks kind of like a dead leaf. So, so several I people, want one. several of you guys were like, it's not a good look for a garden channel, <laughs> even though it's how the plant looks. But this one looks a little bit more bouncy, a little more perky. So I, I swapped that out. Nice. Thought it might make some people happy. <laughs> And I don't think there's anything like a extra to discuss today other than the fact that we've done some really interesting things this week. Yeah. And I'm excited to, for you guys. I don't think the video is going to go out yet, but um, yeah, some really interesting projects. And then we are just days away from the pond project. Yeah. They're going to drop off like a mini excavator today. Mm -hmm. And Brian and Chris are going to start in this Saturday on digging it out. Just the two of them. Because uh -huh. that's kind of a job. You don't really want a big crew of people yeah. around. Yeah. So we've got Chris, who's the local contractor. And then Brian is uh, Greg from Aquascape. Greg, who owns Aquascape. It's his like head designer. And also like, like crazy worker. Yeah. Like he just wails into projects, but he's got a really um, beautiful style and everything. So I'm very excited to have all the, all the people who are coming to work on this. It's going to be a whirlwind. You guys are going to put this together in like two days, this whole pond area. And we have all of our plants ready. And I think we're going to be able to even get some of those installed. So it's going to be, it's going to be good. I'm so excited for it. Side note, I have both the kids in swim lessons, just in case anybody wants to know that was one of the considerations, you know, of, yeah. of waiting to put a pond in because Samantha is two. I was swimming in the deep end in my grandparents' pool, pool when I was two. Hmm. Like that was high priority for my mom. Like if you're gonna be around a pool, we're gonna make sure you know how to swim. Um, so I have pictures and we go like going off the diving board. I was probably, well, I was to like two and a half, right around in that age, age range. Um, so anyway, they're both in swim lessons. So one, they can be by my parents' pool and we don't have to stress quite as hard, but also this isn't gonna be super deep, but it's deep enough. Yeah, two and a half feet. Yeah, I mean, it'll come up to Samantha's face. So it's something that we are very cognizant of and will be very- I wonder how that'll go with the kids. My I anticipate Benjamin being pretty tentative uh, in swim lessons. Oh, I explained the whole thing to him this morning and yeah. I, you have to break it down for him and just say, okay, so we're going to do some swim. He's not afraid to be in the water. He just still uses a um, floaty, floaty device, you know, to kind of help him. Um, so he doesn't have fear of that, but he doesn't like jump off the diving board or any of that yet. And Samantha will just like wild kamikaze come at you like i'm in the pool and she just runs and jumps no warning and i have to make sure i'm catching her um, but i laid it all out to benjamin and told him like you're in swim lessons you're going to learn proper technique you're going to learn how to breathe so like let's say you're by nana and papa's pool and you don't have your swim you know you're floating on what if you accidentally slipped in uh what you know that would probably send you into panic mode well when, during swim lessons you're going to learn how to handle yourself so that you don't have to worry and so that we don't have to worry you know not that we don't watch our kids or anything Mm -hmm. There's always eyes on them. So anyway, it's just peace of mind for everybody. And I know that's been a concern a little bit because we voiced that early yeah. on. So I just wanted to let you guys know we're on it. Uh, okay. Let's jump into the videos from this past week, making a cut flower arrangement, mapping out a new walkway and rearranging patio furniture. I think that video spanned over the course of like, I started it Saturday morning finished it Monday morning. Yeah. <laughs> One of those things. But the cut flower arrangement went to a young man that we know that was taking his girlfriend out on a special date. It was not a proposal. It was just a special date. I asked him, trust me. I'm like, Ooh, I want the details. Yeah. <laughs> um, mapping out a new walkway. So we talked through the options in front of the heart between the Hartley and the house and kind of painted out some lines where we may want a, a flagstone walkway to connect the two and then deciding what we want to do with the grass there which I do think in the end, you're probably gonna scrape all of it. Yeah, I think we'll scrape all of it. And then I think we'll have Pedro put, new. Uh, put in new sprinkler system. And then I kind of maybe want to do sod right there. Cause it's a small enough area that I've never experiment. done sod before. Yeah. And yeah. it'd be kind of, it'd be, I don't know, something to try. Would you need to wait like maybe another, like September it cools well, off He won't just be a able to bit. get to it for another like month, month so and a half. Be so it'll be fine. Anyway, fall. Okay, and then we rearranged patio furniture. So exciting, <laughs> but it was kind of exciting. We moved the grouping by our back kitchen entrance to the brick patio, moved the bistro table that was sitting out in our driveway for the last month or two, moved that to where the other one was. Just it works. Little, little, yeah, it works out great. And I do have an umbrella coming for the table and chairs. Mm -hmm. Should be here. In like have you a ordered days. the pots yet for that space? The no, we pots? need to get uh, we need to get a tape measure out there. Oh, we need to figure out because there's like the big size is big. 
Yeah. I mean, sometimes you, you look at the measurements on a piece of paper and you think, oh, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But then you actually stand in front of it. Dang. Yeah. Maybe I should have measured. It's like a little bit of an overreaction. So I don't know if we get the X, extra extra large or the extra large oh. size. So I think you and get I need to X, stand out X, there. Extra large. Triple XL. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Stadler Lisa said, "Can you tell us what's planted on the back of the fireplace behind the rose bushes? Kind of look like a clematis. You are right. Um, it's been here since we were here. I don't know. It's kind of a reddish." color and I considered taking it out because the, I think that the red really clashes with the pink stones that it's climbing on but it's happy there so I've left it there all these years and we basically just hack it back every year about 18 inches above the ground or so and then it flushes back and does its thing and it will probably stay there until something happens to it yeah uh, Dolly said okay so could you please go into more details about the golden rain trees pros and cons there are definitely pros and cons to that tree. It can range anywhere from like 25 to 40 feet tall and wide. This one has been in for who knows how long. It was there before even the previous owners, owners owned this house. Um, Multi-trunked, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I would say if you are not in the mood, okay, so comes out in the spring and then blooms, yellow blooms, like just covered. I have pictures, I will find pictures covered in yellow blooms. It looks so beautiful and then it drops all of those yellow blooms like a carpet it's like a mulch of yellow they're tiny though they kind of it's kind of like the lo honey locust trees you know you blow them away yeah they're and kind of pretty they are pretty but, but you probably don't want it in like a high traffic area i mean we have it directly over seeding. Yeah. we blow everything off every single day though but during its shed season you could probably blow it off multiple times a day yeah. but the thing that's pretty about those is when they drop the blooms they still are yellow even down on the ground so it looked like a yellow brick road there for a little while and then somehow they just go away mm -hmm. like whenever they brown i don't even notice it so after they bloom they're followed by those green papery lanterns that have one or two little black seeds in them and i think there's some level of toxicity in those and also don't quote me on that but i want to assume that something's toxic until i know it's not mm -hmm. because samantha was putting everything in her mouth last year and those were and she likes little things you know some kids are just like the little things are just it to them and she she wanted to collect them and pop them in her mouth so we were just constant i'm so glad that phase is over mm -hmm. Oh, she still likes to rip apart the pods. Last night we were yeah. all sitting out there and she was just, you know, that baby squat they can like sit for hours with right. their bum like this far off the ground. And she was just peeling apart those lanterns, doing well, nothing they pop the seeds. too. They when pop they get like kind puppets. of dry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so then those on the tree are beautiful right now. They're like a chartreuse green. And then they turn a, a wheat color, a dry color. They're really awesome to use in arrangements but they are a mess. They are a mess when they fall um, and they do seed themselves. If you're not in the mood to have a tree that you have to weed under like all year long, probably don't plant that one. They're very easy to pull, very easy to manage, but they do pop up everywhere. And so I would almost, I would kind of consider it invasive, not mm -hmm. root wise, but seeding itself wise. I think it's a zone five through nine, um, but I do know that that type of tree is very tolerant of drought and it's also tolerant of high pH soil. So those, that's why it's doing so well in our garden. Uh, Maja said, I love the garden furniture. Can you tell me where it's from? That's uh, the Carlisle uh, style. I want to say variety. The mm -hmm. Carlisle variety from Front Gate. And you just have to wait till it goes on sale. <laughs> I've, I looked at that furniture for a long time and I never would pull the trigger and I could never find anything that I really liked as much as that one. Still couldn't pull the trigger. And then finally it went like major. I think it was like half off. It was like some... Cause I got that last fall. Mm -hmm. What was it? I don't remember what Labor Day. Maybe even it was a, then it was expensive. I know, but it was one of those that like I'm gonna love this for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Like we'll keep the frame and just replace the cushions along right. the way. Uh, Tracy said, "What landscaping program do you use to make your drawings for new areas?" That is just the market feature on i in iPhotos. Like, mark it. Yeah, does I say market feature? Well, it kind of sounds like going to market. Oh, it's mark it. It's all one word though, mm -hmm. right? So you just bring up your photo in it. iPhotos and hit edit. And then there's like this little pencil that you mm -hmm. can click. And then that's the market thing. You pretty much have to either have a drone or know somebody with a drone or just hope that like Google Maps is... That's helped us out a lot in the, in yeah. the past. Google Maps isn't always updated. You know, mm -hmm. it can be a couple of years behind. So if you know somebody with a drone, it doesn't even have to be a high quality image. Mm -hmm. Just really anything up in the sky to that you can To get the boundary down. lines. Yeah. yeah. Leanne said, how do you treat your cut flower field for bugs? 
Oh. Funny you should ask. You'll see this video maybe tomorrow or the next day on our main channel, but we are trying something, a new approach, a new healthier approach, and I'm very excited about it. And John said, how do you keep your gate from squeaking? I've tried everything. WD-40? I mean, what else? Yeah, what else do you? Lube it up. Yeah, I don't know. We don't have a squeaky gate, do we? We have a squeaky brake on one of our trucks. Yeah. The new one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but not our gates. Our gates are fine. Attention uh, Deaf Dis said, I love Douglas. He's even brushing up against Aaron. He likes you. Yeah. Well, he likes anybody. Does Aaron not like the cats? I've never seen him, I've never seen him interact with them. Uh, I liked cats prior to having kids. And then something switched. And I don't mind them. I don't want them around my feet. I just don't want them to like bother me. And I don't, I don't like to spend time like loving on them so i mean it's it's not like i want them gone mm -hmm. but i do want them gone from my feet i do too i do not like it when anything clamors at i my feet. i mean i shove them away with my foot you know mm -hmm. like you're not hurting them if no. you just put your foot kind of under their belly you're and nudging then kinda, them out. you, you yeah. nudge them out of the way mm -hmm. but it was funny because benjamin saw me do that and samantha too and they don't know and they're just like oh daddy kicks the cats <laughs> <laughs> it's like well it's not a kick <laughs> We've had to teach both the kids, dude, yeah. don't kick cats. Nope, right. that's not what we're doing. We're just nudging them out of the way, gent <laughs> gently. <laughs> Funny. FC Lead Ventures said, if that honey locust tree doesn't fully recover and gets removed in the future, what tree do you have in mind to put in its spot? You know what? So, like, your type of planning is probably already churning through, okay, what would we do with that space, I'm mm -hmm. guessing, or what would we replace it with? I am like the queen of, I will not think about that until I have to deal with it. Yeah. And so therefore I'm never prepared. Like I'm never prepared to move forward. It always takes me a minute. Right. It's like that, like that's why we have huge flower beds of nothing in them in front of the house because like I got to the point where, okay, we have to put something in here. If the shape's not right, I need to make them wider and all of that. But now, uh, you know, after something changes, then I start to think about it. So I have no idea what I would put there. I would want another locust right there, honestly, but a shade master, not a sunburst. Yeah. Sunbursts are the worst just because they're bright yellow and it just makes right. everything look kind of sick. Yeah. Not that I don't like yellow plants because I still buy like grasses with yellow. Well, you I want plants that are meant to be yellow. Right. Not... Well, but that one is meant to be yellow. It's not meant yeah, to be as yellow right. it is now, right. but it is meant to be yellow. Jessica Van Winkle said, will the golden rain tree not stain your new furniture? No, I've never had that be a problem you know the biggest problem there's a short time when our mulberry tree you know the huge one up front that is a fruiting mulberry we get mulberries from it but there's a time when the birds are eating those fruit the fruit and they fly around and they poop on our cushions and that can stain so that's something underneath the golden rain tree they're protected enough to where they're not getting any of that but anything more exposed will get we'll we get it we should get some slip covers and oh i have them. them do you mm-hmm Aren't they like real, like thick and? Well, I guess they're winter covers, but they're they're custom. I was thinking like a cover that's more of just like a like a, like a light sheet. Well, you'd want it thick enough to where it doesn't stain through, mm -hmm. but just thick enough to where it, it can, you know. If you that's can a hard them thing. Once a year. It's kind of like wrapping your concrete. Like you have these things, yeah. the garden furniture and your beautiful fountains and stuff out there because you enjoy looking at it in the space, not just sitting in it or, you know, being right by it, but just looking at it at the view. And so if you cover it, then it's kind of a bummer. Right. You know, but it's a short time. And yeah, I mean, if you had specific times a year, like these two weeks, we can't have exposed cushions right. because we don't want mulberry colored cushions. Well, maybe that's what we do. Maybe we just put the cushions away for a little while. Because oh, you can still sit that. in the furniture. Yeah, you can. It's not as comfortable, but it's not bad. No, it's not. Okay, second video was the Isley Plant Load Veggie Garden Tour and Planting in the Shade Garden. So Isley sent out 25-ish? Yeah. Maybe? Plants that are absolutely beautiful, perfect timing as well because of the new pond going in. And then since we were out there and I was giving you a tour of all of those plants, we walked through the two long rows that we planted up in the... Oh, new property. That's just what we call it. High tunnel area. Yeah. High tunnel area. And then I planted some acarus ogon. Uh, it's an ornamental grass. I planted some of those in the shady area under the ash tree and it looked so pretty. I love it. So Amy Higginbotham said, I need that moonstone spruce. I'm bummed that Isley is wholesale only. Is there a way to look up what local nurseries sell their plants to the public? I wish I would have talked about this in the video mm. and I knew it. I finished the video. I think it was like, as I was walking into the house, I'm like, dang it. 
I'm going to have to address this in the recap because I forgot to say Isley is, did I say wholesale in the video? You but I didn't have. really explain. Like, yeah, you kind of have to go into detail. Yeah, so they are wholesale only. Um, garden centers have to order in their stuff to then resale it. Re resale it? Resell it. My parents have been selling Isley stuff forever. That's how I knew about them. And um, so talk to your local garden center. And, you know, oftentimes they're appreciative to learn of new people, mm -hmm. you know. And Isley ships, I think, all over the country. So the United States. So, um it's something that you, you would be able to get your hands on if your local garden center would bring it in. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what their order minimums are, but I don't think it's astronomical. So I think your garden center will be able to meet a minimum fairly easily. Yeah. Elder and Oak Farm said, I wonder, do you ever not want to go out and work in the garden? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. There's times where I don't want to do it. Um, do you ever feel like not being outside in the heat? Yes. The heat for me is probably the hardest part. I mean, uh, Boy, it's our 10 day is over 100 every single day. Yeah. Every single day over 100. And a couple of days, it did originally say 110, but I think it's come down to 107, mm. which I'll take it, you know. Um, I do not enjoy being out in the heat if it's humid. I do not enjoy that at all. Um, Luckily for us, it takes a little while to get up to 100. It does. You really have the morning yeah. where it's not bad. And then, what would you say, like seven or eight o'clock? it starts cooling down like pretty mm -hmm. dramatically well like for example um for example uh, like today our high is 101 degrees but it was 62 last night mm -hmm. like like this morning if we got up at five or six in the morning and got out which i've been getting out earlier it goes down dramatically and anything between 50 and 70 that is my favorite range right there anything really above 80 i don't really like it um, i really don't like if it's above like 90. oh not fun at all don't don't enjoy that but yeah 101 106 107 107 106 103 100 100 101 101 <laughs> Um, but you know, it's getting 62, 65, 68, uh, the highest is 71 uh, at night. So it really is a very short window when it's that hot. So often, I mean, we're still working and filming, but we just do it earlier in the day. And then I'm usually in, like, I just cleaned out the studio, groomed everything and watered and, you know, cleaned floors, stuff like that. Um, I'm inside getting things prepped. I've got a lot of other things. There's a lot of other things that we have going on in our, you know, other parts of our life, not just in the garden. So there's a lot to manage and it gives me time to do that. Tammy Martin said, I loved seeing and learning about the plant hall. I need some evergreens that will flourish in the shade under deciduous trees in zone 6A. I'm especially looking for blue ones. Oh boy. Are there evergreens that really... Boxwoods. Yeah. Use... Um, the w winter green, are they winter green in more acidic areas? The, mm -hmm. the winter berries, like the winter berry holly mm -hmm. that we can, cannot get to grow here. Bums me out. But blue. That would be an excellent question for Isley. <laughs> I'd email them. Uh, Jeannie said, what a great truckload of plants. You seem surprised about them. Didn't you order them or did the company just send them as a gift? Um, they, they had contacted us and wanted to send some stuff out. I knew a couple of the things that were coming. Like I knew, um, I'm trying to think now <laughs> of all the names. I knew about the cinnamon curls birch. I didn't know about the blue evergreens that came. Mm -hmm. There was, um, a couple of cedars I didn't know were coming. So there were some surprises in that load, which was so exciting. Tiger Cordova said, does your sister Monica have her own channel so that we can visit her channel and keep up with the progress of her yard? She does not have her own channel. She's kind of thought about it here and there, uh, but really can't make, I don't know. I think she's seen, has watched how it was for us and like how much, how much work it is. Mm -hmm. Like it's a lot of work. And, um, I would say even more so in the beginning because there's so much vulnerability attached to everything that you do because it's new and you're putting yourself out there. And for both Monica and I, we were both raised in a family with like, you don't like no pictures, no video. I mean, we'd have pictures and stuff. But also but a little private too. Very private. Your family was a little more private. Yeah. So if it felt in the, I'm just used to it now, but in the beginning it was a big deal. So I had to work through a lot of like weird emotions mm -hmm. doing it. And so I think that, um, she's had to kind of watch that and she's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's worth it. Um, and I think the reason why it worked for us so nicely is that you and I did it together. Yeah. Um, and her husband, Nick, works hard. He works a lot of long, long hours, a lot of hours at his job. And she has a full-time job, too. So 
It's yeah. a it's a huge commitment. We did for the first two years. Yeah, I was going to say we did it. I know, but you got to want it. You got to want it. Yeah. You really got to want it because it's it was like two full time jobs. Yeah. But somehow, you know, do you remember we watched all of Lost? Uh, we were like way late to the game. We on didn't Lost. have kids. We didn't have kids. <laughs> yeah, and our but yard was, was tiny. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Somehow we managed to do full time work and garden answer, and we watched Lost in like a couple weeks. No, it's not that it was like over a couple of days. Didn't we binge for like two full days? No, I think it was longer than that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that was actually kind of a fun time, though. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was like you and I did three things. Yeah. <laughs> We work you will either jobs. find us at our jobs, our second job, or in front of the TV watching yeah. Lost. <laughs> How funny. Sykes said, out of interest, are nursery delivery vehicles climate controlled to keep the plants in top condition? Some of them are. Some of them aren't. I would say most are not. Right. They're packed in there like sardines. Yeah. They have, they've got it down to a science. Occasionally, you'll get a load where, I mean, my mom has rejected whole loads before. Like, I am not taking that. You did not take your time. There's broken branches everywhere. You recuperate those plants on your time. I'm not mm-hmm. going to do it. Um, but that's rare. And also, is the pesto pine a nut-bearing culinary variety? The pesto pine. Did I get a pesto pine in that load? I, did, I, did you? I don't know. Oh, I did get a pesto pine. Okay, hang on. It doesn't say anything about anything edible in there. Next video is final load of gorgeous trees for the pond area, plus planting a birch. So that was the last, like the title says, that was the last load that we were getting in of like sizable things um, that we may possibly use around the pond area. Erin and I had an afternoon where I think it was real hot that day and I was just like, ah. Let's go. Let's just yeah. like go on a drive or let's go to Jaker and let's look at some things. And you're always down for a, a, J- a Jaker trip. And we didn't film it. We just went over and just walked real slow and looked at everything. And it was a really nice afternoon. We picked out a few things and they delivered them, those poor oak trees. I mean, they delivered them early in the day, but it was still a day that got over 100. And those oak trees, they're like scorched and they look kind of dead. Yeah. I think they're fine. They'll push new leaves, but that's hard to plant a tree that looks like that. Yeah. Um, I wish... You know, I didn't even think about asking or requesting that for them to wrap everything, but that should be a, like a given if they're driving 45 minutes away right. on the freeway going 80. <sighs> anyway. Yeah, our free uh, freeway is 80 miles an hour between yeah. there and here. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> we live in a rural area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're like, we don't care how fast you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Dominic said, you didn't, oh geez. You didn't value the last aquascape and removed it. Yes, it's because I didn't value it at all. Um, are you going to destroy this one too? That is my plan, for sure. Like I'm going into this thinking that you know I'm going to give it a season. Now I'm just going to destroy it. Just, you never know though. Just for fun. That's a stupid question. <laughs> um, did not not value that. We decided to go a different direction, obviously, with the area around the gazebo. We donated the gazebo to our city park. We decided to put the Hartley in. The um, Aquascape Pondless Waterfall was right in the pathway. Uh, and we made that decision right after that. We didn't know that was going to go in. So it was just kind of a, it just worked out that way. We have all of the stuff. We will have it reinstalled. I loved it. I loved the look of it and I, it actually surprised me how much I loved it because mm-hmm. remember how like reluctant I was just about like the whole idea of it yeah. I think it's because I've always been around ponds that are hard to manage and hard to take care of so I've always resisted thinking oh this is just going to be a pain for me and I'm going to constantly be dealing with stuff and algae and leaks and um, and we did not experience that but it was it was beautiful it was just in the way so we will be putting it back and this this pond project right here It's going to be interesting because, and I've explained it, I think I even talked about it in this video, uh, we are hands-offing the entire, like, design. They're just going to do it. And I almost, like, this is something that you specifically have really wanted. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be exciting. The only thing that we really told them was no, like, orange rock. I think that's the only thing that you and I are kind of like, yeah, we don't really like super orangey rock so that's pretty right. much it and i also told them like no no super orange like i kind of like things that skew gray and like cooler toned and then not like big pile piles like no big stacks mm-hmm. you know that kind of thing because it's flat as a pancake out there and we are going to do some recontouring i do know that um but the way he was brian was kind of pumped about the design idea and um so we're just kind of like this is going to be great it's going to mm-hmm. be really pretty 
So it's interesting. Uh, PG Saw Chuck said, how are those tall red oaks labeled so you know they don't shed their leaves in spring? Um, so they, it's a specific type. The red oak um, do lose their leaves in the fall. Uh, most other oaks hold on, or a lot of the other oaks hold on to their I leaves. I thought red oak was like a real general it's, um, type let's see. of oak. It's Quercus rubra. Yeah, so the northern red oak or Quercus rubra loses them in fall, but like pin oak, which is Quercus, I don't even want to say if I'm saying that right, uh, Palustris, Palustris keeps its brown leaves through the winter, as do many other varieties of oak tree, uh, which is what we had here. It, they were behind the gazebo, and they had, like, two of them had something where a viral, something. Well, that, like, spire something? Yeah, but it was like an old English-type yeah. oak um, variety, and it they were starting to twist in the interior of the tree like they had been tied together with ropes several times because it was kind of like the arb thing where they had a whole bunch of leaders and everything was like wanting mm. to splay out but they were taking on this really weird twist um, that and they held onto their leaves all winter long i remember when we removed those i was so worried mm. i was worried about uh i mean even though there was clearly like what people would say yeah oh sure Duh. um just don't care anymore no now <laughs> i just wish that i i felt the way i do now i'm like you know what it's my life uh, we're all just doing our thing you know and i do try to explain everything and try to like um answer questions that i think people may have like why would you do that or yeah. how dare like these you? are the reasons i took it out <laughs> yeah if you don't like those reasons i don't yeah. know what to tell you right we plant plenty of trees and in replacement of yeah. the ones we have removed. So I don't worry about that too much. Um, but they, they did hold onto their leaves all winter. And because they were so tight, like grew so tight, that even though they were shedding their leaves in the spring when new growth was pushing them off, they would all like hold in the tree mm -hmm. until a big wind came through, which was about, about once a week for us. We get a pretty stiff breeze and um, it blows leaves out everywhere. So it looks like you're in the middle of fall most of the season all around those trees. It was such a pain. So glad we don't have those anymore. Life is too short to have crappy trees. Unless that tree, you're trying to baby it because it's providing you shade. Yeah. <laughs> like the locusts were trying to baby. Um, Jenny said, I'm curious when you were going through leaf color, why do you not choose more red or dark foliage trees? Do they not do well in the intense heat and sun? We were talking about that as we were moving through. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to, I don't know. I'm just trying well, to Well, red trees don't get as big, right? Oh, not really. I mean, there's like the crimson king maple, which I think gets pretty sizable, but they, they grow so slow and they get powdery mildew here. Hmm. Like of all things, remember the one in our front yeah. garden? It had powdery mildew every single hmm. year. And maybe it was... Make any sense. I know. And maybe it was just the location of where that one was, or maybe that was just an old crummy variety that who knows, but... Yeah, I just have it. You know what, though, Aaron? I planted one in the middle of our backyard in the townhouse, and it got powdery mildew every year. Really? Mm-hmm. What other red? Well, there's lots of plums. Um, yeah. There's the choke cherry. We did the forest pansy red buds we have out there. Um, there are crab apples with red leaves. There's um, ornamental cherries. We should we should look for other varieties of red trees, but they don't seem all that plentiful here. I wonder if they just don't survive as well or don't thrive as well i tend to want to use those as accents more than as like your established mm -hmm. kind of look that doesn't make sense you know what i mean like yeah. the, the the bigger stuff right tends to just i go toward green andreas bear said what a fantastic selection and ideas for the big new project i can't wait to see the start of the installation would you give us a tour of your neighbor's pond area someday i wonder how, how it has developed it's possible we might go over there and yeah. do a tour of that one of these days uh, Fred A. Burns said, looking forward to seeing the new pond. Are you concerned for the children's safety around the water? Um, only asking because years ago, a friend, okay, I'm not going to even read that. <laughs> um, there's all kinds of stories you can find about pretty much everything that you can skew scary or negative. Hold on, I'm losing my earring. Oh, what a weird thing. Like pushing out of my ear mm. <laughs> just randomly. Spontaneous earring combustion. Okay. Yes, I am concerned about the kids around the pond and that's why we've got the swimming lessons going on and um, all of that. And the kids are, aren't by themselves like ever. Yeah, I feel like of all kids, like we are pretty hands-on, eyes-on. Yeah, with not our kids, to say almost that, that, to a fault. That, yeah, that not to say that things can't still happen, but we, you know, Yeah. I mean, there's always that possibility, but uh, yeah. We are taking measures precautions hannah wills said could you get an umbrella mount on the gator can you imagine driving around with an umbrella 
<laughs> you know, they, do they, they have canopies? Yeah, they do sell canopies. They look really weird. As like, weird as our golf cart? Weirder. Really? Yeah, the way that they're shaped. Oh. It's not like a normal looking canopy. I, I wish that they sold normal looking canopies. I don't know. Something I'm sure could be fashioned. And those seats get so hot. Yeah, you pretty they do. much, you know, when you park, you have to like take the seat and flip it up mm-hmm. so that like the back of the seat is facing the sun. And then they do that so that you can get water out of them mm-hmm. if it rains. But I don't know. Maybe somebody now, it's been a couple of years since I looked. Mm-hmm. They're like, I don't know. I'll put a picture of what the canopies look like. They're kind of funny. Candy Harris said, has anyone ever asked Benjamin what his parents do for a living? I'd be curious to hear his response. We've asked him that. What did he say? Um, He just said, uh, mommy, daddy make videos. Oh, really? Yeah. (laughs) Tracy said, doing things right. Love that Paul and Aaron are securing the trees and mounting the root balls. Do you have any wisdom regarding trees that emit sap? And your wee helper with with planting the birch. Um... Just pines, mostly. Wisdom regarding trees that emit sap. Like, um, I'm not sure what kind of wisdom you would want for me. Maybe don't position any kind of furniture under it. No cars under it. Yeah. Um, Do we have anything besides pines that... That emit a sap? Not really. At, um, elm trees have, like, that little... Oh, yeah, st- sticky. Sticky something. Yeah. That if you park your car under it. Yeah, so you don't want to avoid that. Yeah, but... Mm-hmm. Just, just don't, don't plant those. <laughs> <laughs> We're so yeah, full of information. Yeah. So at the end of that video, we did pick up a Renaissance birch to finish the duo. We made the duo into a trio out in the South garden. It looks nice to have the three trees back together again. Okay. Next video is uh, five trees. I highly recommend, and we'll probably be doing a little bit more, uh, projects like that one because we we were able to be in here and that was a day where it was so so hot and it trees have been kind of on our brain just because of the the new loads of things and kind of planning out what we want to do in that area so we thought it'd be fun just to sit down and talk about oh and recently there was um a some people we know who were asking about recommendations for front yard trees because they just they have zero idea of what to put in Mm -hmm. because they're just not they're not in it's not their element it's not where they're at in life um and that's not you know when you're in the industries in some capacity it's just like you're inundated all the time and you think everybody knows you know Mm -hmm. knows the basics but um they don't you know there's so many different things sometimes those types of videos that we make aren't necessarily for the people who like follow us every single video it's like for the people who are searching around it's like trying to be helpful for people who like a a beginner maybe yeah Mm -hmm. or just like you know what trees are good yeah you know whatever and so just like it was just sheerly based on yeah sheerly based on our experience with our trees in our garden which ones we currently like at the moment sometimes those drop in the ranking yeah if something happens to one of them but uh we talked about lots of different trees in that video penny said could the crab apple trees be planted in threes as triple trunk like you can for the birch trees absolutely we've got two triple trunk prairie fire crab apples and one triple trunk royal raindrops plus i picked up the royal raindrops like multi-trunk it was like a multi-stemmed almost shrub form um for around the pond and then we have a spring snow crab apple that's also multi-trunk that works out really well Billy Joe Bob said, whatever happened with the birch by the chicken coop? Did it recover from the top dying out? Yeah. yeah. It just carried on. It's so weird. So we had that avalanche birch, which I love that tree. And it's like thickened up. I mm-hmm. need to trim it. I need to limb it up a bit. Um, but so last spring, like the whole top, the whole tippy top of the tree was dead. Everything down below it was alive. And I don't think we ever even trimmed it out. Like the tree is just kind of like grown up and you yeah. can barely see any of that dead anymore. But we had another tree at birch, magical globe something it's a little ornamental birch out in the south garden that same thing happened just the tippy top died out of it and just i trimmed that stuff out and it's recovered like a birch thing in our area i was nervous because i thought well it can't be borers yeah not already (laughs) you know taking out and they don't typically take out a whole top they take out like a big section like a big branch you know at a time um anyway so they're doing they're doing well gina's channel said how often should you should you fertilize your trees through the year well new trees we typically fertilize once a year mm-hmm. i don't know that we do it necessarily ours are getting a lot of chelated iron along the way mm-hmm. a soil acidifier along the way you could probably speak to that more than i can yeah it's just once pretty much once a year and you know with the espoma stuff you have to put a lot on like you're you're almost looking at like a full bag 
I think I remember when we very first started fertilizing trees, we were like, should we fertilize everything on the property? Yeah. And then we got to reading the instructions and we called us BOMA. And yeah. we were like, um, this, right. that's a lot. Is that right? When you start looking at diameters, um, and I think the idea is that once your tree is established, it's, it's unless it needs help with mm -hmm. something, you know, it, sh it should be fine. So you're probably only looking at fertilizing your tree for probably like tops the first five years. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's like if they if they still need fertilizer after that, you know, because they should just establish and take off. Yeah. Alice said, I have very wet spots and would love to have some birch trees. I heard that they get invasive, though. Their roots can be. So just be careful. If it's a wet spot where you've got like um, like a sewer area, like drain field, um, anywhere near a home or a structure, I probably wouldn't put a birch tree in a wet area like that because it will, the roots will just go like crazy. Uh, but they're not invasive in terms of like popping up everywhere. I've never had that be a problem for me anywhere way. However, we are dry here, so they might possibly act differently in areas where it's not as dry. So yeah, just keep those things in mind. Daffodils to Daisy said, we are building a house and it won't be done until January, February. Would any of these trees overwinter well in containers? I was thinking about buying some on clearance and then planting them in spring next year. I'm in Wisconsin zone 5B. It's always risky to uh, carry things over. What we do if we have, which we always have leftover stuff, we cluster it behind our greenhouse, um, up against our fence, which our neighbor has his shed right behind um, that fence. So it's kind of like a, this little protect, protected spot and it gets Southern exposure. So we cluster everything up together and then we usually lay like bags of mulch or bags of soil up against the outer pot so that it kind of just like coses everything in. Mm -hmm. If you can pile mulch over every, all the containers and root balls, kind of like we hilled those trees in, better probably would be fine uh as long as they don't get like wind mm -hmm. you know like uh what do you call that just wind yeah like freezing wind it's drying out that usually gets them uh yeah. so you want to keep them on an every two week watering schedule i mean it was without fail every two weeks at the garden center didn't matter what the weather was didn't matter if there's snow on the ground we went out there hooked up the hoses <laughs> yeah. frozen and watered stuff but we had really good success now um if you are wintering the rule of thumb for wintering anything over in a container whether it's in a nursery container or in your pots outside is to only do that with things that are rated two zones lower than your growing zone so that'd be a zone three for you um that way you have a 20 degree buffer to kind of help things survive because it's going to be colder up out of the ground rather than in the ground Diane's helper, Hepler, said a great video as usual. Thank you. Would you consider doing a version of this with all your crab apples? We have quite a number of crab apples. Mm -hmm. We could go through that at some point. Yeah. We should do that next year when um, they are all in bloom. Oh, that's a good idea. And then we can walk around and take a look at them. I that's like when that they idea. look the best. Yeah. Lulu said, is the Shade Master a thornless honey locust? Yes. Forgot to mention that. It's kind of a big thing. Like the purple robe locust, have you ever seen that one? It's not even, I don't even know if it's the same. Hold on. Yeah, it's a completely different family. Like the honey locust is Gleditsia and purple robe locust is Robinia. Uh, but it's it's got kind of locust looking leaves, like they're littler, but it gets these big long panicles of like, it looks like wisteria, mm. like a massive wisteria tree, but they have the biggest thorns. Mm. And so I always shy away from that one and from hawthorns, which I really want. And I know there are some thornless varieties of hawthorns that I will probably look into, but uh, I just, I don't really want to have those big wicked thorns on things. Mm -hmm. I don't want to work in trees like that. Bonnie said, love the resource of JF Schmidt. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think their website was crashed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> under the pressure. Uh, they just have so much good information. So we'll probably, that one's linked below the video, um, that video, and maybe we can link it down below this one as well. But yeah, if you need tree information, especially for deciduous trees, because that's what they specialize in. It's a, an amazing resource. They have a huge arboretum on the other side of Oregon, mm -hmm. and they invited us to come check it out sometime. So one of these days when our kids are done napping, Benjamin is, but once Samantha's done napping, we can travel a little easier. Mm -hmm. um, it be fun to go check that out. It really would. Uh, question for Aaron. Other than chelated iron for high pH if needed, what other fertilizer do you use for your young trees? Tritone is like the main fertilizer. Mm -hmm. um, soil acidifier, yep. which is elemental sulfur. And gypsum. And gypsum. And then, and gypsum, like straight gypsum. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much, those are the three. Well, mm -hmm. and then chelated iron. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess I should probably mention the soil acidifier brings down the pH for us, which is 
because it's high. That's good. Um, the gypsum is almost kind of like fertilizing for us because it breaks up the soil and like allows more nutrients to be taken up by the tree. Mm -hmm. So it's like the nutrients are there and the tree should be taking them up, but they're not. So it's almost as if you fertilized, but you didn't. They were, it just unlocked what was already there. Mm -hmm. It's always been a good thing. Uh, it's like, oh, and then iron tone. Oh yeah. <laughs> I do iron tone, but I don't really know about iron tone. I know the chelated iron works fast. Mm -hmm. The iron tone is such a slow feed that I don't, it's hard to judge the effectiveness. My question for you is, do you have a schedule or you just get just up, you just get up in the day and you're like, I feel like doing iron tone yeah, today. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> nice. Okay guys, the last video for this week is giving our annuals a major mid-season trim. It was pretty major. Yeah. But here we are, you know, middle of July, our plants are, they were full. They were still full of color, but they were looking a little bit tired. Some of the pots looked better than others. And we were just looking at them and I, you know, the potato vine was already trailing on the ground and I knew that needed to be trimmed. But I just looked at those petunias and thought, if I leave them, we still have like three months of our season left. Mm -hmm. They're one going to hit the ground and they're just looking a little bit meager. I think they need more fertilizer. They could need more fertilizer because I'm a total proponent of if you do not need to trim it, don't, mm -hmm. don't trim it. And usually I don't trim stuff, but in this case with the time of year it is, I feel like, and they're already showing more color. It's been mm -hmm. a couple of days since we did that and they're showing color. And I think it'll be really good. And it just gives them new life. Mm -hmm. You know, we were able to, a couple of them, uh, we unearthed some pretty major aphid issues that we had going on. So we got that handled and um, we used the Captain Jack's dead bug for that. Uh, so sometimes you don't know there's an issue. Like there was one that looked like especially meager and that one had aphids. So uh, I think I forgot to even mention anything about that in the video, but we took care of that, but you wouldn't have known. If you well, didn't yeah, they get were in like there. way inside. Yeah, I mean, you could even like look through, you know, the the top layers, and there was nothing. It was underneath. Probably should have mentioned the video that when you're spraying, make sure to spray inside the plant. Underneath, yeah, like lift underneath. that canopy and spray underneath because that's where the accumulation of bugs are. It's not on top. If you spray on top, you're not going to do anything. Um, like nothing. It's yeah. not worth it to go. I suppose unless it. like whatever you spray on top drops down yeah but i mean it's all the stuff right you know um anyway i think it was good it looked very severe and i remember thinking like well i was halfway through the first pot and i thought well i'm all in now yeah. <laughs> like there's, there's there's no going back from this i just have to like it's one of those faith in in growing sorts of moments it'll be okay uh, katie said i did this to my super tunis last year for the first time and they didn't ever flower again any idea why that is so sad um more food. What did food. she say? She said Just she flowers? did this to her super tunias last super year. I think that's probably, well, I mean, a nutrient I issue. I would guess that it was nutrient deficient. Yeah. That's a bummer. Uh, Dorota said, do you sometimes film a project and later decide not to upload it to the channel? I wonder what your scrapped videos are. Uh, rare. I don't remember the last one. It's, I mean, I feel like it's been years probably mm -hmm. since that's happened. You know, Mr. Beast, it feels like every year he puts out a video of his scrapped videos oh, and really? explains like why he scrapped them. Uh -huh. And some of them make sense why, you know, he scrapped them, but mm -hmm. he puts like hundreds of thousands of dollars into his scrapped videos. <laughs> like there was, I think there was one where like he flew a friend or another YouTuber, you know, friend, colleague, uh, to like be in a video and the guy was all excited and he like flew in a private jet to you know to this thing and then the video never came out oh my goodness that would that would suck so bad if you're like so excited to be in a mr beast video mm -hmm. and then it never sees the light of day oh yeah that would <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that much investment yeah. in ours um yeah i you know i can't remember the last time that that happened that happened it has happened but i want to say in 10 years or almost 10 years less than five times yeah um, if, if that, yeah, you know, Aaron encouraged me a lot from the very beginning because when we very first started, I was so nervous about everything and it was such a, it was such a vulnerable thing and such a push to get through so many projects, um, that, and I was never happy. I mean, you guys know when you do projects, you want to tweak things like you would fuss with projects forever and still be like, it's still not like, mm. Mm -hmm. you know, and if I would have let that really creep in zero fairy gardens would have made made it out yeah like none of those crafty projects would have made it out uh, because i feel like they weren't like quite up to what i was thinking or my vision or whatever uh, but aaron just said you know it's 
great. People probably won't even notice that little bit that you didn't fuss with. And if you are still unhappy with it, just put it out there and do better next time. But you got to move forward. You got to keep going. And that's always, I don't know why. That's funny that it made like an impact on it you. It did. I'm like, you know what? That's true. Because if you let that creep in, then it's going to keep you from ever sharing anything. It can get worse and worse to the point yeah. where you just don't share anything. Right. And we do know a few people who have attempted, like have, who have wanted to do some videos and things mm -hmm. and they just can't get past that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I know how that feels. I really do. And I can commiserate with that those feelings yeah those people over the how it feels Ugh. what you need is you you need someone who is um like can can give you like true honest advice on mm -hmm. the videos or whatever it is that you're creating someone who's not a fan you know like your mom maybe you know yeah. would be like it's great she's always you know, positive you, about yeah, everything you need someone yeah. who's like unbiased that, mm -hmm. that could tell you like this actually does need more work mm-hmm um, and if you have somebody like that in your life that you can show what you're doing, you're pretty that's kind of what good you need. You need an impartial uh -huh. person. Yeah. And I, I feel like I, you're impartial. I can. Yeah. You don't get emotionally involved in my projects. No, I haven't at like, all. It's a weird thing. You know how some people are like loyal, like to the end, mm -hmm. right? Even if they know that the person was wrong, like they're loyal. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't have that in me. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's. I don't like it, but also if, you know, if you're wrong, you're wrong like and I'm all that, you know, yeah. If somebody, <laughs> if somebody came like, you know, did you know that this person that you trust did this bad thing? I'd been like, well, maybe they did. Let's find out. You know, mm -hmm. like I don't instantly go like, no, that's my friend. They would never do yeah, that. Yeah. You don't you go know? to the defense. I never come to people's defense. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm not that person. Maybe they did. Mm -hmm. Everybody struggles with, you know, this or that, like. Let's, you just, you are emotionally unattached. I'm, I'm totally to unattached. Situations. I'm like, let's find yeah. out, you know, mm -hmm. like let's dig. But I never defend people without knowing all the facts, mm -hmm. which makes me look like a hor like a horrible no, friend it, or. I think it's, it's a good thing. And I think it's probably more needed than the other skewing yeah, the other direction. Sure. Uh, John said, is there a minimum amount of time you should wait between using the granular fertilizer and the water soluble? Could you even do them at the same time? I think you could do them at the same time. Mm -hmm. Plants would love you for it. Jennifer said, you go so fast with the pruners. Have you ever accidentally cut yourself? <laughs> no. You were nervous for me. I told you. It was weird. You've never done that before. Really? But you were like, be careful. I don't want you to cut yourself because I was just like hacking away at it. And I, I didn't even think about it. You know, the last time I cut myself with my pruners was, <laughs> oh, it was the year... It was the year that we had the cut flower garden right right out in the middle of the no man's land out there because I was just so excited about having this new piece of land and growing things and it totally wrecked the progress of what we could have gotten done out there that year in terms of like running water and electricity and but it was fun except for when a windstorm blew all my corn down and I went charging out there like super mad at the wind mad at the corn I was just it was one of those days it was really hot and it was really muddy, like like mud. It just watered out there. And I just took my shoes off. And I just was squishing through the mud with my feet. And I was carrying these 16-foot ranch panels by myself. And I was pounding in T-posts, putting the ranch panels up, and lashing the corn, like tying, bringing all the corn up and tying the corn to the, the ranch panel because I wanted so much for that corn to do well. Uh, somewhere along the line, I dropped my Felcos on the ground and they were open and I was trudging around with bare feet and it sliced the bottom of my foot pretty good. Do you remember that, Erin? Mm -hmm. Like it was, <laughs> they were brand new Falcos though, like brand spanking new. I probably opened them the day before. Uh, so I wasn't like nervous about the cut and I just cleaned it up and bandaged it up and moved on. But I think it probably was getting close to needing stitches, if not yeah. actually needing stitches. <laughs> anyway, I hurt putting on my shoes the next few days. Um, Starry Knight said, what can I do for long floppy Shasta daisies? Well, make sure they're getting enough sun, make sure they're getting enough water or not too much. Also, you might need to divide them. A lot of perennials, if they're getting too thick, if they start to flop or act weird, if you divide them in the early spring or in the fall, early fall, uh, it just kind of revives the plant, gives the plant more energy and they don't flop quite as much. You know, I was looking, <laughs> uh, we've got some like, our grass is a little yellowy, like, um, not, it's not like chartreuse. Like, yeah. Like not burned. It's 
you know, like maybe too much water is kind of what I was wondering. But there's also a couple spots that look like they need a little bit extra water. Hmm. And they're like right next to each other. And so, uh-huh. and the sprinkler hits them both. So I don't, you know, I'm not sure. But <laughs> I looked at this one website and it was like, well, it could be a sign of too much water or too little water. It, you might be mowing too high or possibly too low. And it might be that, you know, you're fertilizing too much or potentially too little. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you were unhelpful. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about my unful, helpful answer. Like, cool. <laughs> so it could be anything then. <laughs> well, here's the deal. Your Shasta daisies, if they're not getting enough water, they're going to wilt and flop over. If they're getting too much water, they might be rotting and the root system is rotting and they will flop over. Right. So... <laughs> the result, yeah, is the same yeah, for both. Yeah, right. right. It is hard. It's hard when you're diagnosing plant problems. Yeah. Um, because it could be, it could skew so far either either way. Yeah. Ugh. And you have to start, it's just a good list to start with. Okay, it's like, is it too wet? Finger test. No. Yeah. Check. Is it too dry? No, it feels pretty good. Check. Okay, so maybe I'm mowing it too high. Mm-hmm. No. Might be too, you know, and you start right. working your way through that. Your dad had it for, this isn't about lawns, but... um your dad was saying for lawns, you should put multiple like bowls of water. Uh, Just empty bowls. Empty bowls of water out. Yeah. Empty bowls. Empty no bowls. water. No water. <laughs> <laughs> they, will, they will fill up with water after yeah. you, you know, either the rain or, or your sprinkler system. But like put them in the areas like one in the brown spot, one in the yellow spot, one in like the mm-hmm. nice dark green spot. And then just see how much they fill up. With your sprinkler. Irrigation. With your sprinklers. And then, you know, you can see... Or even with rain too, like you might be thinking like this is getting rainwater, but then it's like, oh, the canopy of the tree is actually diverting it this way or, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever the case is. Doreen said, how are your pruners after that? I find petunias to be so sticky. My, my pruners were fine. It was my arms, my arms, like from lifting up and stuff, they were pretty sticky afterward. I think I'm so used to it though. I just move on. I don't even know that I like went in and washed my hands. I just kept working. Uh, will your pond crew be working in that heat? Yes. Might need a couple more umbrellas to give them shade. Yes, we have, uh, there will be a tent set up. There's going to be a bunch of fans. Uh, also, you know, we're really dry heat and a lot of this crew is from the Midwest. So their heat is like humid heat. So this might actually be a pleasant treat for them. Yeah. Honestly, um, like, yeah, was it yesterday? It was like 102 No, not yesterday. It was over the weekend. It was like 102, but it was 14% humidity. Totally doable. Mm -hmm. As long as you, you know, we had a, my mom and I were harvesting wheat that day and we had a umbrella over us. Every time we had to go out to the wheat patch and it was really quite pleasant. Um, But you were talking about Chris. He's bringing over. Chris, um, Green Source Landscapes, the local guy. That's the local guy, yeah. Uh, He said he's got these Ryobi fans that spray water, like mist. And if you've got the shade... Mm -hmm. you know close by it's doable molly said these pots are gorgeous just wondering though if you didn't fertilize would they stay at a manageable size so you don't have to trim them might be a fun experiment no i think what would happen if we didn't fertilize they would look even stringier they would in fact the reason why ours are kind of petering a little bit is probably because they don't have enough Mm -hmm. like we maybe need to up the amount of fertilizer that they are getting yeah i think that they bloom more and grow less with more fertilizer Mm -hmm. like they stay tighter right uh, and then Zimakas, Zimakas said, wouldn't it be better to plant differently from the beginning? No, it's just the nature of these plants. They're just big, aggressive plants. And we have a long season. Yeah, that's it. That's it for today's recap video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one.